welcome again to another episode of Equip and Elevate. I am so excited today. I have my dear friend Jabuli Legwala. She is such a force, guys. I even was saying to her right now, every single time when I'm with her, I learn something new that she's doing. And I don't know how she does it, but she's doing all of these things. I'm particularly excited about her talking about her journey of leaving her nine to five to pursue entrepreneurship. I think that move in its own we don't hear those stories that often so i'm excited for her to unpack that so welcome hi welcome to my podcast i'm so excited thanks for you having share. me and uh, and i think your story honestly i'm really excited to unpack it your journey excited to unpack yeah. it. and i really do hope like women who are listening or people yes. listening at home will sit there and say oh i've been thinking about this i've built a sense of you know, I'm ready to maybe step yeah. out and try something new, whether yeah. it be leaving or building my business while also still pursuing my nine to five. But I think just your story about that, that journey for me is, and you did it during the pandemic. Yo. Guys, she left her nine to five during the pandemic. Yo. So that already for <laughs> me is like, she's so bold um, and I want to get to know her a little bit. So just to get started and as opening questions to get to know you a little bit. Um, I'm going to ask you just to tell us about your childhood, some of the key values that have shaped you or the person that you're becoming today. Okay, so I am from Katlehong, so the east of Johannesburg, so I always say that uh, because I was always that kid that liked to play, you know. Yeah. I started school when I was like four, so sure. I was always the youngest in the class, the most childish, the most energetic. So if you meet any of my schoolmates, they'll tell you, I was annoying, yeah. <laughs> um, but I l always love to be to play. I've always been active. Um, I have a younger sister, and literally, I'm like the oldest, so I've always had to look after her. So at a very young age, I've always just you know had that responsibility of just you know having to make sure that you know she's cared for. My mother, who was a serial entrepreneur herself, oh. so actually now this you know it makes sense yes. how I turn out like this. Um, so my mom, if I can, you know, for as long as I can remember, she's always, um, she's a banker, so she was a VP in compliance um, in a big bank, but she always had a side hustle when I was growing up, you know, so sure. we, she was a single mom, so at any given point, she was either selling this or selling that, so she's mm. always had a side business, so I've, I've always kind of probably even subconsciously just drawn from it. Um, so yeah, that was me as a child. I went to school in KZN. So after matric, I moved to um, UNP, mm. where I spent, I mean, three, four years before working there. So um, I bring that in because as much as I grew up in um, an, an urban township, when I moved to KZN, I fell in love with culture, Zulu culture. So I'm a Zulu girl that grew up in, in a township. So a lot of the things about our heritage, I didn't know yeah. until I moved to KZN. Um, so I fell in love with that, started learning it, uh, found my husband there, and yeah, started working as a sales representative actually um, in KZN. But what I find interesting, just talking about what you wanted to be or what, did you, what you wanted to do growing up, um, I think there's one component where you say you wanted to be a fashion designer, but yes. you end up studying computer science. Yes. Tell us more about that. So I've always loved fashion. I've always like had a weird fashion sense and I've always, you know, have been drawing, um, you know, coming up with different concepts and ideas. But I don't think my mom kind of understood fashion at the time. And she was just like, no, you are mad science. That's what we're good at. We're going to school. We're going to study science. Stick to the plan. Um, and I mean, I was quite young. I was uh, 16 when I went to varsity. So I was like, okay, um, sure. I'll study science, but I, I want to study something new. Mm. And that's when I came across computer science. I didn't even know what it was when I, when I went in. Um, and I enjoyed it very much. But um, I always knew that it, it is not, you know, what I wanted to do. And I think I learned when I was doing my third year, you know, that passion is everything. Yes. I remember, you know, we came back from school, um, one of the guys that was in our class who was really, really good, you know, he's, he could finish a practical in like 15, 20 minutes while we are still trying to understand the question. Yeah. Um, and he said he spent his entire holiday, you know, working on different codes and doing things and he cracked into some spaces and he reached out to those companies and he told them what, but you could see the passion when he was talking about mm. coding. 
And I was like, no, man, that's not how I feel when I look at coding. <laughs> and I don't think this is then what I want to do. Mm. And that's when um, I moved into marketing. Um, and so, you know, I'm glad that that experience happened to me at the time because I didn't even understand what it was. Mm. You know, now, you know, I can articulate what was happening. Yeah. But I didn't know then. But I'm glad that um, I had the interaction where I saw someone passionately talk about something that they really enjoyed. Mm. And I said to myself, I want to find something that makes me sure. be like that when yeah. I talk about it. So when I'm like talking about marketing, I get excited and, you know, I can get lost in it. Mm. Um, and that's how I uh, switched from computer science into marketing and then finally finding my way back into fashion. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Just hearing how everything fits in yes. from your mom to being a serial entrepreneur to you wanting to be a fashion designer to you wanting to go back into yeah. that space and just it really it's always crazy how we don't think these yeah. things connect but they, they end are up all connected always, always find a way to connect am i just touching on your journey when you were now studying computer science tell us a little bit about your journey in in corporate and how that was and you know and what some of the things that you learned from there yeah. So for me, you know, when I when we're talking now about things, you know, when you look back, they connect. Um, I look at what I've been able to do with my brand now, mm -hmm. um, Sigo Republic, and all of it is influenced by the things that I've learned in corporate. Sure. So in, you know, learning how to sell yeah. as an example. So, yeah. you know, once upon a time I was going into different spaces, you know, selling beer every single day. So being able to have measurements to say that if you are, you know, selling, what does that look like? What are your KPIs? Um, and how do you set those KPIs? You know, how do you look at your volume targets, your availability strategy, mm -hmm. your merchandising strategy, your pricing strategy? You know, what promotions are you going to run? And if you're going to partner with uh, different distributors, if I hadn't, you know, gone through that corporate space, I wouldn't even think of things like that. Yeah. Um, so now, naturally, the first thing when I look at Sego, you know, sometimes, you know, my mom tells me that... I forget that I'm not managing my big multinational brands. It's just, you know, my little small baby seagull. Because yeah. I just go there naturally. Yeah. Um, so that for me is what I've learned. The structure of, you know, how to manage a business holistically. Mm. Um, I, like you said earlier on, you know, while in corporate, I got a chance to then uh, be exposed to different roles, you know, yeah. so brand building roles, mm. marketing roles. So as much as I didn't study it, um, when I was in that role, I was, you know, keen to learn, keen, keen to understand what makes brand building, um, brand building, you yeah. know, what are the elements? Um, and I didn't have, you know, the background from school. So it means that when I walked in, I always had to be switched on. I had to like listen even, you know, more than my peers because I was like, okay, I don't, for me, this is not my language, mm. you know, so I have to work extra hard in, in order for me to understand the concepts, apply them and, you know, um, come up with ideas on, on, on how to take the brands forward. And I think that's also the reason why at any given point, I was always just over delivering, over exceeding targets, because sure. I always felt like this thing is new yes. to me. It's exciting to me. So I want to um, learn the concepts and apply them and ask. I wasn't scared to ask questions yeah. uh, because I, I didn't feel like I had to know marketing. I mean, I didn't study it. So I always knew that these elements that I don't know. So I, I, I never felt at any given point that I can't go to Ayanda and ask Ayanda, you know, if Ayanda is doing great. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think that's also another key thing to say it's very important to to be okay with saying that, oh, this part, I don't know it. Yes. Um, and I, I see that you're doing it so well. Mm. Um, can I kind of learn from you? Can I ask you this, these questions? Um, then you just learn so much faster and you save yourself sometimes just some, you know, failures that you could have, you know, probably experienced if you didn't ask. Sure. Um, so I think for me, those are the things I'd say I'd learned from corporate. Um, working with people, mm. um, you know, learning that you can't deliver without a team. Um, and now that I'm on the other side, you can't deliver without people's support, uh, you know, people's grace all the time um, and I think you know Sigo has grown to where it is now not because of just me it's all about the people that you come across and then they go oh this thing is actually really nice yes um, oh I actually like the story 
I'm going to contribute in this way. I'm mm. going to contribute in that way. Mm. So corporate also taught me that, that you, you cannot, you know, achieve anything by yourself. Um, so, yeah. So I think in some of the lessons you've learned, I just want to track back to when you, for instance, you were referring to you've never studied marketing, you studied yeah. computer science. Yeah. So how did you end up in marketing? What was that journey for me? So, ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So that journey is called my husband, firstly. <laughs> so he studied marketing and he just made it look so nice, you know. Yeah. Um, when we started working, I was working at the Devon Port um, as a, an IT um, support uh, manager and he was already in, in marketing, so he worked for Dunhill. And oh my gosh, I was like, they cannot be paying me to do this. Like, yeah. you can't get a salary on top of all of this. <laughs> and I've always been, you know, very outgoing and I've always enjoyed the creative space. So because of that, I was then exposed to this world. Um, then an opportunity came uh, within, you know, some of the, one of the FMCG companies. And then I applied. And I remember, I mean, I think I had like six or seven interviews because it was, you're a computer scientist, you mm. want to get into sales. Um, and I'm always grateful for uh, my first line manager, um, so Dexter, who took a chance on me because, f firstly, I had no cooking clue what a sales rep did. <laughs> I just really thought, I mean, marketing, you just go to parties and you look cool and you convince people that the brand that's, yeah, that you're holding is cool. Um, but he was really patient with me. I think he just, he liked the energy, he mm. liked the passion, and he was like, Any, everything else you can teach. And that is also for me another key lesson because every single, with my entire working life, even mm. now as an entrepreneur, you cannot teach passion. You know, if you yes. meet someone and they're joining your team and you can tell that, oh my gosh, this person doesn't have the energy, firstly, to be here, to be working. They're not passionate about um, what they're coming to do. They're not passionate about your brand. They're not mm. passionate about what you're selling here. You cannot teach that. Mm. You cannot fix it later. Sure. You know, you can teach them that when you are selling, this is how, what you look at. You look at volume. You look at availability. You look at, you can teach that, but you cannot teach passion. So that for me is another learning um, to all entrepreneurs, especially small business owners, mm. uh, because you don't have the luxury of bringing in someone and then teaching them and then hand-holding them. Uh, because you you you're going right yes, like it's, exactly see startup you need people who are exactly driven, initiative, exactly it does not work if someone needs to be handled you, you it, can't. It's, it's a different structure because with corporate you have that yes, support yes you have 20 yes, people in a team or you yes, have 10 people in your yes. team right now it's you and another person exactly that's it and you that's it you have to make it work and yeah i mean I understand what you're saying there from that sense because it's so it's such a different ball yeah. game. And, and it's so important. And yeah. I, I, you know, every time I reflect on it, I mean, I just remember now as we're speaking that the reason why I got that role, it wasn't because I knew anything about sales. Mm. It was because I was passionate. Like at every interview, he would ask me, like, what do you think happens here? And I would talk about it and be <laughs> excited. And, you know, uh, he's still a very good friend of mine. And he says it. He's just like, you're like the cutest little thing to watch because, yes, yes you're so young. <laughs> and I was just like, this girl has no cooking clue what we do here. But, you know, it I was a rude... To work with her. Yeah, it was a rude awakening. You yeah. know, we went from being, you know, uh, the bottom, bottom in the region to being number one. Wow. Because we were... It's the passion. Because sure. if you're passionate about what you're doing, you're going to put in the extra hours. They don't feel like work. Yes. Um, even when you start to think about ideas, they come so naturally for mm. you because you are really enjoying what you're doing. When you see a challenge, you are first. You are the first one to be like, oh, so this is what we could do. What do you think of this? What do we think of that? Versus someone who's just in it for just, oh, okay, well, yeah, and what must I do now? And I think it goes back to like, you also want to build sort of a team, especially in a startup phase. I mean, it's, yeah. there's different phases of a business. Yeah. So I want to bear that in mind that with that startup phase, you sure. need someone who is thinking outside salary, who's thinking outside what are my roles and responsibilities, but someone who's going beyond and above, someone who's like, okay, 
I see there's an apple. What can I do with this apple? Exactly. I actually need this fruit, but I don't have that fruit. Exactly. But why can I make you with what exactly. I have right now? And why am I here? Why yes. am I with this startup? You know? Yes. Um, what does the next five years look like for this startup? Am I excited yeah. about where, the, where they're going? Mm. Because the money will come later, but we have to build it. Mm. Um, so if the passion is not there, it becomes very, very strenuous. Yeah, sure. I think just even going from now we're moving from corporate to you now starting business, right? Have yes. you always been entrepreneurial? What has what inspired you to start your first business? So I've always been um, very entrepreneurial. Mm. Um, I mean, from varsity days, I've just I've, and I, funny enough, it's always been in the fashion space. Um, I've always just um, you know loved putting together outfits, um, you know, selling, you know, doing stuff with friends. But I've always been scared, and I, won't, I will not lie. Um, I've never, you know, before I, before I left corporate the first time, it was a dream that was there, and I was like, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. Mm. Um, and then, you know, some, you know, sometimes you get pushed out, you know, circumstances, fight with your boss, you do this, you do that, and you're just like, I'm out. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. So I think for me, that was the biggest thing, where I was like, okay, <clears throat> I feel like my job here is done. I feel like my value um, and my work is probably no longer needed here. So it's time that I kind of explore this thing that I've always wanted to do, you know, mm. this thing that's always been in my heart and how do I bring it to life? And that is how I got into entrepreneurship. And when I started, I read up a lot about, you know, different brands, you know, um, and I, I was clear that I want to build something that will outlive me. Mm. Um, and that's why I always say that the the biggest focus for me was always to build outside of Jabuni Lekwala, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I always wanted my brands, even in the beginning, um, my face wasn't even in it. I wanted, you know, Civil Republic to have its own identity. Yes. Um, I wanted people to just judge it for what it is and not just be like, oh, this is, you know, Jabu's thing. Um, and I've always said, what do I want it to look like in 50 years? Mm. What do I want it to be? You know, I don't want to come in and sell yet another product. Um, we have so many products already. Um, what do I want to do with this um, business that I'm bringing in? And for me, it's always been, how do I think now about um, the long term? Sure, sure. I mean, I think just even just going tracking back to when you were saying that you basically had to take a risk the first time because generally when risk. someone s would start and say, they will say, I see that there's movement here. Okay, I'm tapping out of this. Yeah. I'm leaving this nine to five. I'm walking away from security because I can see yeah. that there's something happening here. Yeah. And there generally is that sense. Yeah. With you, you were like, yeah. I'm walking out. I mean, I'm leaving to to pursue to this start to start something yeah sure and i mean like we were chatting earlier you know it's the first time when you have nothing it is really tough mm. right and we used to make fun of this um well i've left corporate now i've got my business card i've got my logo it says ceo of a company <laughs> and then you're like but where are all the perks you yeah. know i thought like ceos do certain things so when you when you leave corporate when you le leave that security to start something new um you know it's it really is a baby that mm. is needing you to plow in and like put in so much to it right um so the first year um i went completely you know cold turkey just my my business and it was tough because at first you have no proven concept mm. you know so you can't just go in and be like hi ayanda please invest in me this is what i'm doing you know the gym wear space looks like this i've already gotten this kind of traction mm. and it's just like well that's just your idea yeah babes. that's still a dream yeah um so it is going to be tough but you have to persist so any entrepreneur right now who is starting anything that is what i would say to them um focus on this dream ask questions, listen, you know, listen, have it clear, this is the end goal that I want, mm. but be very flexible to say, okay, you know, this thing can, you know, look in different ways. I, if, if I tell you now, the first name and first logo I had for this business, what it was, you would probably even just like laugh. It has because changed. It, 
chalk and cheese. And I was adamant that this is what I want to call this brand. Yeah. And like my mentor has been like, no, that's just not going to work. And he, and he was like, I don't have an answer for you, mm. but that's just not it. That is not it. Mm. And he looked at my logo and he was just like, <laughs> you are, no, you are not there yet. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that have the people in your life that will help you. Have the people in your life that you trust for different things, mm. you know. Have someone that you know that when I have, you know, business questions or business um, challenges, I go to this person and they're going to be honest. You know, this person's not going to be there trying to, like, you know, just put a smile on my face and say, oh, yeah, well done. If it's not right, they will tell me it's not right. And when they say, now you're onto something, then you're like, now I've done something really quite um, amazing. So that for me is the first part. Just give yourself that time and that grace. Really do think of it. You know, the first three years, I'm on my third year now, and only now I'm like, oh, now I can have different conversations. The same people I spoke to in year one that were just like, come on, yeah. you know. Now I'm sitting, you know, in, in boardroom meetings with them. I'm strategizing with them um, because I've, I've got something now to bring to the party. So don't get uh, discouraged in the beginning. Knock everywhere. You know, some will actually take a chance on you, which is perfect. Mm. But just continue, continue to push. Um, so I went back to corporate, like I said, after a year. And I went, I went back because I, I needed that security. I was like, okay, I need to go back so that I know certain things are covered so that I can continue to dream. Yeah, um, sure. And then that brought in different challenges now because now you're busy, you know, working with two babies. Yes. Now it's and almost like you've got that, two husbands. What was that process? That was thing? hard. <laughs> that was hard. And I tried, I will not lie, I tried very hard, you know, not to like mix the two, mm. to give everyone, you know, the attention that they deserve. But it was just, it was just um, difficult. Mm. And at any given point, you know, um, you look at these two children of yours and then this one just really warms your heart and somehow you do end up just spending so much more time with them. Um, but after two years, I left my corporate gig to fully now, you know, go back to my business, you know, go back to my business. And you were leaving, like being head of marketing of a major, I mean, a major corporate and during a pandemic. I think that for me is like, really goes back to the passion and yeah. goes back to the vision yeah. you had for your business. It yeah. was not just like, okay, I'm over this, then yeah. I'm just going to pursue, but it was really rooted in what you en had envisioned. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I loved both my babies very much, yeah. but there came a point where I had to choose. Sure. Where it was like, no, now you have to make a decision. It's either you're here or you are here. Mm. And for me, it was, it, it'll always be my business, you mm. know. Uh, I, I, I really love corporate. I've enjoyed corporate. But what I've learned from it is that it's still, it, it, you, you walk in with your handbag on your first day of work and you walk out with your handbag the last day of work. And for me, I was like, what do I want to leave for my kids? Mm -hmm. You know, when Oetu turns 25, what do I want to give her? Mm -hmm. And I've been very clear that I won't be able to do that for her while I'm here. So this baby is the one that will always take priority. And so the second, legacy. it is about that to say that, you know, um, if we, if we want to build the Africa of tomorrow, mm. we do need more entrepreneurs. Yeah. We do need more small businesses. You know, every economy is built up of a lot of small business owners. Yes. Um, so, you know, you can get more people employed. Um, and I felt like, yeah, I've learned everything that I needed to learn from corporate mm. and I can take that learning and build something else mm. that can teach other people. And I'm hoping that they also, you know, if they want to start their own businesses, that's also great because as a country, we are so behind, yeah. um, when it comes to that. No, definitely. So the second leave was so much better. So for those who are doing side hustle and main hustle at the same time, um, it is much easier when you exit your main hustle because now you see that, okay, my side hustle is turning into a main now. Sure. So, you know, you are literally just taking this baby that you've already, you know, kind of 
gotten into like toddler stage or some form of stability and you're just exploding it. Um, so yeah, for me, the second leave was so much better. It was in the middle of a pandemic, but it didn't even feel like it. Wow. Because at that time, I was like, I had so many things that I wanted to do with um, the business. It was now, you know, I wasn't able to do both. So as soon as I let go of my main gig and focused on um, the business, it just exploded. It just exploded. We were busy. I remember, because I want to I wanna go back to that. I still want to speak about in good company. But just talking about the pandemic, I remember when we spoke, you were saying that because of the unfortunate event um, set up of COVID, I really yeah. don't want to celebrate COVID. Yes. But because of COVID, the digital presence has allowed your business to really do yes. well. And, um, and would you say that also inspired you to say, okay, I'm ready to now leave because my business is actually doing well. In, yeah. In an, you know, for many people, I mean, during that time, the business was struggling, yeah. but yours just went. Yeah. And cause I mean, we also in the active wear space, um, we have this unique little brand that we love. So the, the, the demand and the, the traction that we're getting on the brand was really growing. Yeah. People were exercising at home. They're creating these videos. Now, you know, home workouts were a turn up. Yeah. So they wanted to look good while they're doing that. So the demand just grew, you know, like production <laughs> during the pandemic. We we're like crazy. It was crazy. Um, so, you know, that kind of really helped um, with the move as well to say, in all honesty, this baby is not demanding so much of me. Yeah. Um, it is only fair that I just, you know, go in and just run. And when I did that, um, Ayanda, it was, there was no way I could have done what you're doing the right things now. that we were doing if I was still working. You sure. know, we, we were, you know, fortunate enough to dress the top 10 finalists I for Miss that. SA, well which was that. amazing. It was an all day workshop you know, just prepping for it and getting into that day, meeting the wonderful ladies and, you know, working the brand, you know, the post PR on it, then the demand that came from just, you know, um, that activation, it, it just couldn't have happened if I hadn't taken um, the decision to just say, let me focus on this. Mm. 